Hi, I'm Stacey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be talking about working on a design team. Maybe you're an intern or you've graduated and you've just got your first job. Here are some tips for you. How do you ask them questions? When do you ask them questions? What questions do you ask? How long do you let yourself be stuck before you ask for help? All of these things that people run into. The number one thing is to write down your design decisions and your thought processes for debugging something. So say for example, you've got this bug and it's annoying. Write down your debugging process so far. What have you tried? What worked? What didn't work? That kind of stuff. Writing down your thought process allows your colleague to see where you've made mistakes in your thinking or made mistakes in your assumptions. And so that will help them help you correct that course and say, oh, but there's also this. Have you considered this thing? Before you go and ask for help, practice describing your problem. There's a technique called rubber duck debugging, which is when you practice describing your problem to an inanimate object. In this case, to a rubber duck. Because what you can find is that during that process or during the process of practicing explaining your problem, you can actually gain more insight into to your problem itself. And then while you're practicing explaining your problem, try and anticipate what they're going to ask. So if I tested X and I tested Z, then it begs the question, what happens at Y? Obvious questions will come up of like, well, what about this? You know, did I try that? Go and answer that question before you go ask for help. So that when you do your explanation and they come along and say, what about X and Y and Z? You could be like, oh yes, I did do that. The other thing that I would also recommend you're practicing and you don't actually know what a term means. And this is actually really interesting because during the course of making these videos and being forced to explain these concepts, I've had to Google things because I didn't realize, like I have an intuition for that thing, but I don't actually know the technical definition. And so Googling stuff is actually really helpful in that regard. God. It also means that you can ask further questions beyond that. If you've Googled that term and you read something and you're like, oh, I'm not 100% clear on this work, how this works. Instead of just asking, what is X? You can go and ask, I read up about X. Can you clarify this for me? And that's a much more directed question for your colleague than just a generalized what is X? You want to try and have direct questions for specific things that they can answer that are clear and specific versus kind of generalized. Like that could take like a half an hour long explanation. Knowing what to ask is a skill that you will develop over time with practice. And that's when you can kind of say, okay, you've done your due diligence, right? You've tried as much as you can, you've practiced explaining it, you've tried to anticipate their questions, and you've written down a list of things that you can ask. And this is the point where go and ask them your questions. So general advice, read and follow the design specifications for your company. Companies will usually have a design specification. They'll have rules about if it's software, it'll be like software syntax, software naming rules, software guidelines of the code that you write. If it's Verilog, you might have recommendations or requirements for state machines, blocking versus non-blocking statements, stuff like that. Ask them for the design spec and read it and follow it. So this is going to help you write code that's in line with what they want and also write code that's good. Usually design specs are there for a reason. Usually they have reasons behind what they do. The second thing I would say is read other people's code. If you have access to a code base, if you have access to a colleague's code, if you're using Git or some kind of version control, go look at the other people's code. What do they write? What state machines do they use? What structure do they use? What naming conventions do they use? The best way that you can learn is from following the design spec and looking at other people's code. The third tip is take notes. Say for example, your colleague comes to you and they're like, oh, Stacy, can you please do this X, Y, and Z thing? Write it down. Don't assume that you're gonna remember because you might not. And then they'll be like a week later, be like, oh, Stacy, what happened to those things I asked you for? And you'll be like, oh, I forgot. Don't do that, just write it down. So don't assume that you'll remember, if, especially if you're like super busy and there's like a lot of things going on and a lot of things that you have to do and have to remember, write everything down. Write down what you have to do. So there are a couple of things that can come up in meetings that are really good to prepare for. So say, for example, it's a team meeting and you're going to be reporting your results for the week. It is 
a good idea to jot down a list of what you did. And I know that these things can be quite simple. Like, well, I remember what I did. But the thing is, is that you might forget something or you might forget a critical number. You might, you might say, oh, Stacy, what was that number? What, what was that result? You know, what was that error rate? And you can't quite exactly remember. Write down that number so that you can flip in your notebook and be like, oh, yes, it was this. In conjunction with this, I would recommend that you don't guess. If you can't remember the number, but you're like, oh, I think it was 5%, don't guess. Rather say, I don't know offhand right now. Can I get back to you and let you know what that number is? And then write down in your notebook, get back numbers for so-and-so. So that way you are not guessing. So you don't want to like guess and then look like an idiot afterwards because actually you got everything wrong. There's another kind of question that comes up quite a lot. Like say, for example, there's a new technology that they want to explore. So say, for example, you get asked about the experience that you have with a specific field or with a specific language or topic and you you don't have any experience right you've like never touched that language before it's important to be honest at that point it's important to say well no i don't have any experience in that area and it might be tempting to say well yeah i've seen it before once if you truly don't have experience say you don't have experience be representative of your skills there's a couple of reasons for this the one is that it sets up expectations it now the team lead is going to make a note in his head oh okay i need to train stacy in this field or i need to pick someone else who has experience that could take on that part of the project there is nothing wrong with saying that you don't know if it's do you have experience if it's have you heard of this technology before do you know this number offhand saying i don't know is extremely important thing to be able to do. I have had practice saying I don't know and the trick with saying I don't know and the thing to remember if they know that you will say you don't know when you do say oh yes I do have experience with that they will trust you. They will take you at your word. Stacey is the kind of person who will say that she doesn't know and she has said she knows with this and so I can trust her answer. And if you have someone who always says they know, oh yes I know this, I know that, I know this, I don't that, you're not actually giving any indication of whether you actually know or not because your answer is always the same. Keeping your word and keeping trust in the relationship between you and your colleagues and your boss is so important for moving your career forward forward because no one's going to put you in a position of authority over or a position of responsibility if they can't trust you focusing on being someone that's trustworthy and responsible is probably like the number one thing that is going to help your career there is a link i will link in the description to a really really good video that demonstrates this that kind of solidified this concept in my mind what makes you stand out is being someone that other people like to work with because when you're working with your colleagues and you're seeing them eight nine hours a day you want to be working with someone that you actually like so be the person that people like to work with this is not a perfect recipe like obviously workplaces can be toxic and colleagues can be toxic and you can only really control what you do in the workplace but i've found that these tips have been really really helpful for me in terms of being someone that someone wants to employ being someone that someone wants to work with and it's so much more than just being smart and even it's so much more than being hard work Working. Being hardworking can really get you very far. But when it comes to working your way up into a company, into higher positions, you really need to be trusted. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.